Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Well, I know many of my listeners will have a certain number of regrets about the July 4th holiday, and some of them may not have even celebrated it at all. I certainly share many of those regrets and concerns about the future of our country. We have an extremely bad government that has increased in size enormously. We have a national debt which has exploded in size, an annual deficit reaching $2 trillion a year. We have an all-encompassing surveillance state that monitors everything we do. And of course, we've had a neocon takeover of our government and a ever more powerful Federal Reserve manipulating our money and credit system. And the list goes on and on and on. It often seems hopeless. Well, I think this is the wrong perspective. And I think it's something we need to get over. And we need to know what to do going forward. Personally, I'm very optimistic about the future, and I think we are winning the battle of liberty, but of course, there's much work to be done ahead. First of all, this battle is not a military one, and it's not even a political one. It's won through the process of ideology, winning the minds of our fellow citizens, but first we have to win over our own minds. Why do things work in a free society or a free economy? Why is the free society ethically superior? Those are the battles that we are winning in the hearts and minds of people all over the world. Regular listeners know that the Mises Institute is the central cog in winning that ideological battle worldwide. So we do have reasons to celebrate. And there are ways to get ready for next year's July 4th celebration. Admittedly, the United States is no longer viewed as a city on the hill, the city of light. And that, frankly, is a good thing. And it's something that more and more people know about, both here in the United States and around the world. That old utopian view of the United States is broken And that is a good thing. This is especially true among young people in the United States and around the world. I'm usually most concerned about young people. I'm not even really concerned with anybody my age or older. I always think about and work towards the future, even if we have to think and act today. We have lots of work to do but we have excellent targets to work with, especially the Federal Reserve, its inflation, its boom-bust cycle that it creates, and its robbing from the middle class to give to the financial elites. Frankly, as a nation based on immigration, the people of the United States still make for a pretty good nation, a very good people with great traditions, tolerant, well-meaning, and hopeful as a population who have created a great standard of living and shared it with the world. So we already have a good starting place from which to work, even if it does start from a position where the American people have been divided by our government, at least politically. What we need to work for is an ideological reunion of our people based on an ideology that includes sound money, and individual property rights. And that reunion is exactly centered around the topic of independence from government. So let's step back and take a look at what that meant. People came from Europe to the colonies to get away from Europe. It was, after all, quote, a new world, and it must have been a very scary prospect. Europe was a place of constant warfare, high taxation, inflation, and religious intolerance by governments. And of course, the people hated war. They hated taxes. They hated government paper money and debt. And they came to the colonies out of desperation. 
colonial and frontier life made them even more independent but also much more thankful for the people that they did depend on around them, the people they worked with, the people they bought and sold with, worshipped with, etc. They had defeated the world's only superpower from the dark side of the pond. They declared their independence and tried to create a more perfect union. That's not an easy task, and I'm going to be asking you to do far less today. We can only think and act in the present. So you're not going to be expected to overthrow a nuclear superpower with your box of fireworks. You simply need to make two mental notes. Every 4th of July, I make a mental note to redeclare my independence from government. And you can do likewise. Second, I also commit myself to be more appreciative as a member of our society. Society is really the opposite of government. Everything in society is voluntary. Everything about government is based on the threat of force and violence if you don't comply. Think about all the people we depend on. It's easy for me to give thanks for my plumber, my electrician, and especially my air conditioning people, even if I hadn't seen them in a while. We might also have customers or charities that we work with. Of course, we also see many people every day in stores and in drive throughs and at work. We have people who help us, that help us with our families, our pets, our homes, our cars. And we have all types of insurance to protect many of the important things in life. We want to be independent from government. But in society, we should acknowledge all of the assistance we receive from others. And we should also do our best to do our part in what Ludwig von Mises called the social division of labor. If we make these two mental notes to declare ourselves independent from government, while at the same time declaring and acknowledging all the help and assistance we get from one another, we're on our way to acting personally in such a way that we're getting ready for next year's July 4th holiday.